we're, we're at the NAM show, of course, and this is a chance for us to show what we do in our workshop for the other 364 days a year. And this is probably more Santa Cruz guitars in one place than anywhere in the world. And the one I'm going to show you right now is really tells our story uh, uh, better than most. One of the things that we really believe in is responsible harvest. And there's a altruistic part of that where we're only using materials that don't come from uh, a living tree. We don't participate in deforestation uh, or, or even cultural upheaval where whole, whole groups of people become extinct by the way woods are cut. And this is a good start. This top on this guitar is uh, Sitka spruce, which looks something like this, a nice blonde color, but this is blue because it's been frozen for 3,000 years. It was in the uh, Chundra in Alaska, and a fellow that looks for uh, reclaimed spruce for us is able to find this wood and give us a call. Uh, most of the old woods now find us. Uh, people call us up and know that we're looking for them. So the aforementioned responsible harvest and not having to cut a tree, but the huge advantage is it sounds better. And the reason that old guitars and old violins are more resonant than new ones is the wood gets better sounding with age. Uh, the sticky uh, resins, the polymers, will actually become like crystal over time. And we don't know any way to accelerate that except for time. So whether this wood is in a guitar, uh, buried under the sea, or in a, in a workshop somewhere, it goes through the same process. So this instrument was built for a player, and it was built for a specific sound, which is also our specialty. So this wood was chosen for its bright, clear, articulate voice, and when this guitar is played, you'll be able to hear each note clearly, cleanly, and all the nuance the player puts into it. It's uh, combined with uh, b African blackwood, and this wood is um, spooky. It's uh, really beautiful in this burly section. And it was cast aside uh, because it wasn't appropriate, let's say, for a clarinet or an oboe, but perfect for us. So another uh, example of uh, reclamation, reclaiming old wood, and we got exactly what we wanted. The tone of the back and sides will give the guitar, again, a clear sound. Uh, notes will be really separate, and the artist can really show off their style of playing. Uh, the fingerboard on this is ebony, traditionally, but it's inlaid in snake wood, which is a really rare wood uh, prized in the violin tradition for violin bows. And these are little offcuts and pieces left over from the violin. And it's a beautiful contrast to the ebony. The binding is also the snake wood, and these combination of woods all give us the clarity that we want in this instrument. So uh, uh, maybe you've already there, there's no good or bad about any specific wood. There's more appropriate or not for you. The woods are like flavors or colors. You choose what's best for your playing style and your guitar. Uh, we combine that with, with tuning and voicing this instrument so we're assured of sustain and complex overtones. And we get that every time. Uh, takes the hurt out of worrying that you might get a bad one when we do it that way. So every guitar that we have here today is spoken for. We work with a player to get the design, the sound, the function, the neck feel that they wanted. And uh, we're lucky enough to be able to show them off here at the show. This is um, a really highly prized Brazilian rosewood. And Brazilian rosewood has a reputation for a reason. It's beautiful, uh, it's uh, really powerful, bright and clear again in tone. And uh, it's also really difficult to get and horribly expensive. Uh, most people realize there's also some challenges to do this legally, but it can be done. This wood is reclaimed from the remainder of trees that were cut in the 1930s. And this is the tree trunk 
uh, that was cut with a two-person saw rather than a chainsaw. So it's cut here rather than on the ground and we can source these beautiful old tree trunks. Uh, the, the Brazilian rosewood doesn't get beautiful until the wood is dead and then begins to go through this colorful process. So if that wasn't cool enough, this has um, abalone detail around all the edges, including this, my favorite part here, the tail. And this is green abalone from our coast of California. And it's, um, it's put everywhere appropriate to make it look expensive, but it's also done to not hamper the sound of the guitar. This bright and clear uh, Brazilian rosewood is complemented by this uh, moon spruce from the Swiss Alps. And these, the family that does this has done it for 500 years. The, the wood is cut in specific phases of the moon that minimizes the moisture and the resins in it. And it's a lot clearer, it's a lot cleaner, really prized in the violin tradition. So the combination of these woods here are probably about, um, oh, I'm gonna say approaching 100 years old before they went into the guitar. And remember, as I was talking about, older wood sounds better. So it's important to say it's not necessary to have this uh, dramatic provenance to the wood or this expensive wood to make a good sounding guitar. What we're doing is inviting the dialogue to be able to tell that message that older wood is actually more desirable than new wood and we don't have to cut a tree to get it. So the, the message is we can make the best stuff in the world without making the world a worse place by the way we source materials. Uh, this is a, a, a delight, I hate to see it go. So in keeping with this idea of uh, reclamation, responsible harvests of wood, and making excellent sounding guitars. Uh, uh, I've done this, I've told this story for 40 years and woods begin to find us. And we got a call for this cowrie from New Zealand uh, and it's unearthed uh, uh, in uh, maybe a road building project where these trees turn up because they were buried in ancient times. They were buried so quickly there's no oxygen involved and again they didn't decay, they were just preserved. And the back and sides of this ancient cowrie uh, were measured at almost 50,000 years old because that was the limit of the measuring device. There's uh, uh, geographical evidence here that this may be as much as 150,000 years old. And uh, it's a pretty big obligation to use this wood. Uh, I, uh, I had to have it by my workbench for a long time before I could decide if I was worthy enough to build out of this. We, um, we wanted to make it uh, simple, uh, elegant, but plain. In fact, my whole idea is the guitar should look more expensive as you get closer to it. And uh, there's a lot of instruments that are the opposite, you know, the blings from a distance, but they don't hold up so well when you get close. With that, we used uh, a redwood, and this is also an ancient redwood that was reclaimed from a train tunnel that was built in the 1800s. And both the density, the, the uh, polymerized resins uh, make this crazy responsive. So we actually get the sound of an old guitar by using these old materials. And it showcases this cowrie really nicely. Now, if we can break and look at the back of this, I'll show you the cowrie itself. What we'll see is these bands of light uh, will switch back and forth and they undulate below the surface. It really is spooky looking, befitting of something 145,000 years old. Um, it, it, in the bright light outside, it actually has a hologram effect and makes people jump. And that's fitting for something that that's this spooky. Again, uh, it's not just a marketing ploy and it certainly isn't a way to uh, make the guitar sound better. What it is, is it's the message again that reclaimed wood is actually desirable compared to wood cut from deforestation. So I'm really proud of this one. It's probably going to ruin our ability to make, to use older and older wood over time. I don't think we can top this. OM Grand that we've made here 
is, uh, the wood is so unique that the tree it came from uh, can be uh, uh, searched by putting the tree in your search engine, and this will come up in the first couple of pages. Uh, it's one, tr one mahogany tree that had this incredible figure in it, and it's been around now for since about the 1980s. And it's so desirable, it's been made into conference, table, conference tables, office paneling, things like that, and now it's reclaimed from that for making guitars. And the, and the price is astronomical. The wood is unobtainable, but of course we do it anyway. And uh, making an instrument out of this showcases our abilities as luthiers. And again, it's a reclamation, it's beautiful wood, and it sounds marvelous. This top is uh, a European spruce. It comes from the Femi Valley where Stradivarius, the school of Amati, cut their wood for violins. And it is, uh, it takes a little talking to get access to this wood. They don't like to sell it to guitar makers. And uh, this beautiful pattern that's underlying here, uh, we call it bear claws that the bear had scratched the tree. Uh, they call it Haselfichte. And some people find it really, really desirable and some people find it disturbing. So it's interesting litmus test to see what people think of that. This one is voiced in tune for versatility. People will be able to play finger style. They can flat pick and there's a lot of headroom in these woods. They can really drive this as far as they want. It's uh, also impossible to bend, <laughs> but we do it anyway. So the theme here is using the best stuff we can possibly get, uh, using old fashioned techniques to get the best sound that we can get. And when we're done with this, we can guarantee the player's satisfaction even before we finish the instrument. Uh, the, the tradition we build in is really the violin tradition rather than the steel string. And in that there's a lot of control over how the final instrument will come out. Uh, the old wood is a big advantage in tonality. And the building the guitar with an absence of tensions make it sound much older when it's new. So there's our, there's our story. Uh, reclaim wood the best we possibly can do. And not only make it, does it make it fun, but the byproducts the best possible guitar we could make.